Trustee Board Member Davis and Board Member uh, Board Member Salvino, Vice Chair. I mean, are you there? I'm here. Okay, awesome. Well, I guess we can begin. Um, I would like to welcome you all to our CRA virtual workshop. Today is Monday, August the 2nd, and it is 5.32 p.m. Call the roll, please. Chair James. Here. Vice Chair Salvino. Here. Board Member Davis. Here. Board Member Llewellyn. Here. Board Member Odman. Here. CRA Director Chen. I see you. Sorry, here. <laughs> Very good. City Attorney Ansbro. <clears throat> I think you're muted. Tom's there. All right. Okay, the focus and direction of the CAC board. <laughs> Mr. Shan. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought you were stating the subject. Uh, yes, this meeting was called specifically to discuss the roles and potential funding for the CAC. Um, I was asked to do some research to determine uh, the source of the CAC, uh, whether it is a city board or a CRA board. In fact, it was created by the city commission as a city advisory board that supports both the city and the CRA. So it actually is a city commission board. And with that, uh, the discussion is uh, open for uh, uh, the role and activities of the CAC. Absolutely. Um, I, I see I'll allow Linda Wilson to kind of speak first. I see her hand up. She has a lot of historical knowledge on on this item. And so if we can allow her to speak. Are you there, Linda? I am. I, am. I, uh, I thought Laura was going to make a presentation, she and Natalie. Is she not there? She was here. Her hand was raised, but oh. it appeared. So I do not see her now, but I do see Natalie. OK. Just a historical perspective, um, I have been on the CACAB in one role or another for over six years. Uh, and I'm very happy that the uh, uh, Mr. Chen has found what I have been espousing all along, that the CACAB was a city board, citywide. And the reason that it was turned over to the uh, Community Redevelopment Agency was to be the liaison. The reason that there are three departments that need to approve all the ad hoc members just goes to prove you that the CRA and two, the city manager and the uh, biggest planning and zoning uh, are the ones that have to approve all of the ad hoc memberships. So as as I've always said, it was a citywide board, and and I'm very happy that that has been clarified. Thank you. I don't know if you need any other historical perspective, but we have done a lot in the past and continue to do, uh, or at least plan to do, which I think Laura and, and Natalie will be presenting to you. So thank you very much. Thank you. Laura, are you there? I see you now as a panelist, but we don't, yes. don't see you. I'm attempting to start my video. And you're not muted. I, oh, there you go. I'm attempting to start my video, but I'm unable to. Um, and I also plan on sharing my screen for a brief PowerPoint presentation, if possible. Monica or Frank, can we assist, please? Please try now. Okay, start video. There we go. I got my green light going. There we are. Much better. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I would like to introduce myself. I am the chairperson for the CACAB, and I've been on this board for um, just shy of three years, or just shy of four years at this point. 
And um, I do have a brief presentation. It will probably take somewhere between 10 and 15 minutes on some of our achievements in the past. And um, I want to preface something before we get started. As of right now, we have five empty seats on our Creative Arts Council. And with the discussion in previous months of developing a public art board of sorts, I would like you all to consider filling those positions with people who fit the descriptions of the folks that you wanted to include on that public art board so that we can all remain on one board and synergize together and um, help create initiatives out of these new funds that we have from the um, Art and Public Places Ordinance. So just something to keep in mind. I find that, you know, we've had a lot, we've had years of preparation here. And as I go through our vision and purpose, you'll realize hopefully that there really is no need for a separate board and that these empty seats give you all the opportunity to place people there accordingly. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now. Let's see. Keynote. Like, I have to change my security preferences. One moment. <laughs> Hmm. Let's try again. Share screen. We'll just say it's desktop. Ah, okay. Linda, did you want to speak briefly um, while she's sharing her screen? Yeah, members uh, of the ad hoc committee, the places that are open, one of them was Tony Walsh, and he should be reappointed to that because he has a great deal of theatrical um, experience, as does Natalie. And since much of what we are going to be uh, working toward is going to be for more performing arts as well as visual arts, and Tony has been an immense help during the past several years. And his, his, uh, his appointment expired and he was not reappointed because that was all happening during the uh, pandemic time when we were closed. It looked like we're back to it a little bit. Uh, but there are, that would remain four additional positions that need to be appointed by the CRA and the city managers and the um, I believe it's the planning and zoning, but we need those four applicants. So, okay. I can't see when it's sharing the screen, so I'll, let me, but go ahead. Um, so I, I was just going to ask for clarification before Laura starts here. Um, what is our what is our goal here today for this meeting? Um, like we, we discussed the things? Or is it to decide if we're going to give, um, you know, there was talk about sunsetting this board. I, I think if I remember correctly, we were all on board to not sunset this board. Um, there was discussion about do we fund the board or do we go with the traditional format of an advisory board where they come and they present projects and you, you grant them money. So what, what is the objective of this workshop? I thought it was to decide what the future of the board is and how it would facilitate and relate and, you know, how it will operate as, a, as, as an advisory board. Okay, so today we're looking to, to decide how the board will move forward and are, are we touching funding or no? I would think so. I, I would think, I know that we can't make decisions because this is a workshop. I understand that. And I also understand that, you know, it was a whole thing about is it CRA versus city, but we can still talk through things and things can still be presented at an official meeting. So um, just to see what 
I mean, we have a budget discussion tomorrow and by having this today, we can see if this is something that we're willing to entertain tomorrow or, you know, to add to the budget discussion tomorrow when we have that. Okay, so then I think it's fair to say that a, a, a significant, a real focus of this, has, it has to be the funding portion since like n now it's coming back to me. I, I remember the reason we wanted to do this tonight was because we wanted to do it uh, specifically before budget. So that that's something that we need to at least individually in your minds um, know how you feel about it so that tomorrow um, or what, you know, I guess tomorrow we can say, okay, we want to allocate funds or, or we do not. All right. I just needed that clarification because I wanted to make sure moving forward uh, and Laura's doing her, her thing now that I, my mind was in the right place. So Laura, if you're ready, you can go ahead. Ready. Okay. Does that look right on everybody's screen? Yes, we can see it. Okay, beautiful. Alrighty, um, I'm here today to go over a few important topics. Uh, one of them being public art. Well, the main one being public art and what that looks like for our future. Uh, I found this to be really inspirational. Public art can tell the story of community spirit and aspirations by honoring the past and envisioning the future, which is super important in Dania Beach. We have a very, very rich history that highlights many different cultures and events and even some awesome wildlife that's very unique to Dania Beach. And I believe that by putting together a public art program with a even 10 year master plan in the works, is essential for catching up to the cities around us, which have been really thriving due to their public arts, and also you know, bringing people specifically to Dania for timeless art exhibits that are can be truly spiritual as well as historical too. All right, so our mission here is to enhance community vitality and encourage economic opportunities through a portfolio of arts and cultures initiatives that capitalizes on Dania Beach's distinctiveness and creative potential. Here's another quote that I found very poignant for this event. Art pulls a community together. Art makes you feel differently. That's what artists are doing all of the time, shifting and changing the way you see life. And I think we can all agree that over the last year, we all see life very differently and um, are given even more reason to celebrate the beauty that is in the world when we're able to uh, experience it. Our vision is to transform the community with art and culture programs that drive vibrancy and improve the quality of life by spurring economic growth and enhancing tourism. Uh, this was a, a snippet I took from the original executive summary of the Creative Arts Council when it was created back in 2012. Uh, there was a workshop here, which as you can see, I believe it was at IT Parker, it looks like, uh, with multiple attendees sharing ideas on what they wanted to see in the arts community. And after going through their plan and their goals, we are still right in line, although we have not been able to achieve very much up until this point due to a lack of funding. But the ideas and strategies that were created during this meeting are, are still very relevant today. And I would love to see this board be given, given the opportunity to actually have access to those funds now that they are available. Here's an example of some art that's already happened. This wasn't complete at the time, but I think it's absolutely fabulous. One of my favorite artists locally here. And uh, I have to move my, my video to another side so I can read. Um, our goals are to continue to preserve the city's culture and heritage. How do I get this? Oops, let's go back. Okay, culture and heritage. 
um, create highly visible and participatory art programs, incorporate art into neighborhoods, continue to support and develop signature events, provide additional support to local artists and art businesses, increase access to arts edu education in the community, create a public arts program, develop creative arts and entertainment district, which I believe, especially with the um, you know, development going on over at Dania Point, uh, this gives the downtown area of Dania, you know, a unique opportunity to stay relevant and to draw people into, you know, what, what I guess is considered, you know, Dania proper, as opposed to, you know, a, a large development along I-95. And then also develop art facilities and venues, which we are definitely lacking in comparison to surrounding cities. Um, I'll touch on a little bit more on what I have in mind for that or what we have in mind for that. Uh, celebrating our successes from 2013 to 2019, we were able to wrap over 18 signal boxes in the area. We were actually one of the first cities to start with this type of art installation and it was a huge success and there are still many more left to wrap. And um, I've also noticed a couple of really interesting things going on. I think in Hallandale, they've actually repainted a number of their fire hydrants too. And, um, you know, with themes from the city that I think are very important as well. Just giving splashes of color and, and reasons for people to smile everywhere you look in Dania. We have some pretty distinctive art already. Um, Thousand Mermaids, as we all know, is something very, very exciting. It's going to create a whole nother sector of tourism here. I know I specifically am looking into getting my scuba certification so I can enjoy it once it's on the bottom of the ocean. And it's definitely going to draw some crowds. So two thumbs up on adopting that. And we are the first city in Broward to do so. And that makes me super proud. Art in the Hall. I believe I've seen almost all of you attend our Art in the Hall um, monthly gatherings. And I definitely look forward to seeing them happen again in the future, depending on uh, when we're able to start doing it after dark again. And I have a little uh, YouTube video that kind of explains it to anybody who wasn't able to attend in years past. Oh, where did it come back? I don't know if it's going to let me play my little video. Hmm. I'll give you a brief synopsis. And maybe I have to exit out of full screen mode for this to work. Let's try this again. There we go. Allah. Good evening, folks. This is Laura with SeeMyBeach.com, and I'm here tonight with Sandy, who is one of my partners on the Creative Art Council uh, here in Dania Beach. And she actually organizes this monthly event that we are attending right now at City Hall. And um, did you take it from here? Tell me about our this hall. Um, I'll give you the brief synopsis. We started about a year and a half ago. Um, we're on the Creative Arts Council together, as we mentioned. And our thought was to bring art to the community. It's very important that community can grow, but without art, it kind of loses its core. Um, I'm the jewelry artist, artist and uh, jewelry maker myself. And I know that it gave me a lot of confidence when people liked my stuff. So our favorite thing was to showcase artists that have never shown before. And so that gave them the confidence and to kind of push, there's so much talent out there and to push people, to give them the confidence and push them to the next level. Also twofold with that is there's people in the community or anywhere that are intimidated about walking to a gallery. Um, 
I was intimidated to walk into a gallery, and now they can walk into their own city hall and talk to artists directly about what a medium is and what kind of art is and learn. So it's kind of a win-win situation, and now it's kind of morphed into this wonderful thing. The city, uh, definitely the CRA uh, promotes, promotes us and supports us, and uh, we now can have music, and we've had different musicians from around town, and it's kind of like inviting uh, a bunch of your talented friends and having a party. Basically, it's a little jam set. Yeah, <laughs> kind of. So it's a good time. And uh, we interviewed another artist today. It was her first time showing. Oh, and that pretty much sums up what what Art in the Hall represents to us at the Creative Arts Council. Uh, there was also a video I was attempting to put into this where a, a little boy who was eight years old had some art on the walls and was super proud of it. So it is a very important event to the city because it allows artists of all different levels to showcase their work and sometimes it's even in their hometown let's see um, go back this way here are our budget recommendations for the fiscal year 2022 and beyond um, obviously keeping intact with traditions of the art gallery. Uh, we've had some changes on the board recently and are definitely looking for someone to join the board who can be, can act as a curator for this event. Uh, previously it was Henriette Arnold who has decided to retire from her position. And um, we'd love to see these receptions and the art in, in City Hall. I know you guys have seen many different installations come in and out of there. So we're definitely looking forward to continuing that tradition and um, as well as have gallery uh, receptions for featured artists that will be on the walls and also invite other artists to show, you know, just for that evening uh, temporarily. Laura, may, may I interject with a question real quick? Absolutely. Okay, because I, I feel like this is the thing that you really, uh, th there's the most proof of concept for. Uh, so I wanna understand, you, so you, a total, a re the, you're making a request for 6,000 for the anticipated uh, 2020, 2022 year to do one full year of the art in the hall as it sort of existed last year with the, the music and the exhibitions, et cetera. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Have you, and have you formally submitted anything yet to either uh, any entity at City Hall? Aside from this budget, we have not submitted any sort of master plan just yet. We are planning right. on revising that uh, depending on how this meeting goes. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Laura. Continue. I have a question before you continue. Is that four hundred and fifty dollars for the musical performer? Uh, Twenty-four. Uh, yes, it would be to fund the musical performances. Sometimes they are even spoken word, uh, not necessarily needing that whole four hundred and fifty dollars. We have some members of the board who have some musical talent who may even play for free. And that is definitely our goal. Um, but having that budget there definitely allows us to, to showcase some, some upper echelon talent. Well, I, I, I'm interested to see how much we are paying the performers on the outside and if that is consistent. Um, I know that they don't perform the entire time, but $450 for how many hours would they be performing and how much were we paying them before? I believe most of our, I, I unfortunately was not on the Art in the Hall committee. Um, maybe Linda can interject if she might. I believe that that was mostly like pro bono work from the artists. Yeah, I think it's around, it was around $200 max. I, I'm just trying to see where the vision from adding an additional $250 per month will come in at. Okay, um, these are just suggestions. We obviously can make changes and, um, you know, depending on the budget that you allow us, we will make it happen. May, hello? May I?
Linda? I'm trying to unmute, but I can't get there. Okay, we hear you now. Okay, anyway, um, we... Oh, now you're muted again. I'm trying, but it works. There we go, we've got you. Got okay, before we were paying in the vicinity of 250 to $300 a month for the performers. Usually it was one or two, sometimes it was a group, uh, like folk art people who came and did, uh, you know, we would pay them a little bit more, but it also included uh, a dance performance, which sometimes with Sandy, she had friends who were all performers and belonged to different group dance groups, and they would come in and do that free. But we were looking at us not having that opportunity, and that's why we were increasing the budget, because we would have to pay then for other people, word of mouth people who would come in and do poetry readings, and other people who would come in to dance or play music, other than the, the performance, musical performances that we did in the past. So we were upping it a little bit, Mayor James, and that's because we were no longer getting the pro bono people that we have. Thank you, Linda. Okay. okay. Any other questions on this item? Nope. All right. Uh, this is kind of goes in line with um, the same events. There is a distinction between artist receptions as well as just an, a regular art in the hall exhibit. Um, these formal receptions gi give tribute to the artist, allows the general public to come in and interact with the artist. They can even have some live art involved, which we've seen a few times at Art in the Hall. And um, we up also provide some light refreshments during these receptions as well. Hi, um, sorry, Laura, it's Keisha. I just wanted to um, um, interject just a little bit to add a little more context to um, the previous slide. Uh, and good, uh, good evening, everyone. This is Keisha, uh, Strategic Communications for the Vanity Dictionary. Um, in regards to the um, increase for art performers, at Dania After Dark, um, generally and typically the budget was $200. Uh, the only time we would increase the funding would be for any special enhanced events, like when we had the 115 celebration or Touchdown Dania Beach. That was the only time that there would be an increase in the budget for the art performers, just add a little context. Got it, okay. Yeah. Alrighty, uh, this is a topic that I was actually on this subcommittee, so I'm a little bit more versed in, in what this contains. Um, originally, we started a call to artists to have the garage wall outside of City Hall to be painted, and that was a very, very long process. We had about 25 to 30 applicants and we eventually narrowed it down to three. And then the project was changed several times and eventually just cut entirely from the CRA budget. And I believe that is something we get to revisit. I also have included some slides later on in my presentation on some more economical options that could be used for that wall that I think um, create very, very powerful art installations. And uh, so this here, this is what we were projecting to present to you for the 2020 budget. And so I kind of just kept it in line with what we were originally requesting, but we are definitely open to some other options. Thank you. Can you stop sharing your screen, please? So we can kind of see. Let me see, my mouse kind of disappeared here. So I'm going to try escape. Okay. Okay, great. Um, 
I don't know if you, board member Ottman or Eleanor or Corinne or whoever is in charge of the Art and Public Places Committee and Board could provide some clarification because there seems to be obviously um, confusion of, of the differences of the board's responsibilities and duties and the relationship to each other. Um, because some of these projects, I don't know if it would make sense for us to fund them out of our general fund if we have an art and public places fund that you know wouldn't come from taxpayers dollars but it would come from that fund so um i, I see the projects i think they're beautiful projects i was a part of listening to all of and advocating for those projects before it was cut but now seeing where we currently are i'm i'm unsure of the projects portion of it not not the day after dark but when we talk about the functionality of the cacb and um, art and public places boards, it's just really difficult for me to differentiate. And then as a board, we need to decide. Um, legally, I don't even know, Tom can probably clear this up, uh, if it's a CRA board versus a city board, and I know it then was designated to the CRA, but I would like it to go back to being citywide. Um, I think the scope of work and ideas could touch a, a larger area and then just a concentrated CRA area. And then we can add a liaison from the city um, that can serve and, and to run that function as well. Okay. Uh, Mayor, this, this was, as we noticed uh, earlier this, today, supposed to be really a city commission uh, discussion about a city board. It didn't turn out that way for some reasons that are not relevant right now. You're having a workshop, you're not making any final decisions. They're affecting what you may do tomorrow, so it's okay to proceed if you choose to do that. But uh, again, this board before you today is a city board, not confined, as we all know, to the CRA. Now, the, the fact of the interaction between what this board does and what the new board to be created, as uh, proposed by the county uh, agent who came to you about a month ago, that's unclear and, and that's being still developed. Corinne or Eleanor could elaborate if needed, but without knowing precisely what the duties are of the new board to be created, I mean, it's being created just to be filled and staffed up. I'm not sure how this interacts as well for the mind. Okay, go ahead, board member Ottman. Okay, so I mean, just to sort of try and uh, condense everything a little bit. So does either, Eleanor or Corinne, do you want do you want to sort of opine on um, how the the murals may or may not fit into the art and public places um, uh, ordinance that we that we passed in the the plan for that the the city art plan um, how that could fit in. Yes, hi. This is Eleanor, Community Development Director. Um, the projects described, I, I feel, would fit within the public art plan. Um, it, it's kind of in the infancy phase, as you know, the public art master plan was just adopted. And we have not created the board, we have to come back to you with the, the board requirements. So um, as far as funding is concerned, I, mean, I, I think it's just too far, too um, early in the stage to, to, to make that determination. Um, Corinne has some information on the different duties of, of the two boards. If you'd like her to pull that up as one of the slides that we went over in the previous presentations. That would probably be helpful for clarification since one of the boards would be new. Good evening, <laughs> Commission. Um, the so the 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 slide that um, the information that I'm talking about was one of the slides that was made as a presentation um, in June when the map the city the public art plan was presented um, with from staff and Broward County our consultants. Um, so some of the things that were listed under the CACAB's kind of responsibilities and roles 
was to establish and create policies and action plans. Um, we'll have an interest, we'll have an expressed interest in raising the profile of arts within the community redevelopment agency, encourage excellence in design and historic preservation, assist in fostering a strong, vibrant um, cultural environment that supports a program for performing and creative arts, identify and advise on ways to attract county, state, and federal programs and grants to support um, arts programs and grants, of enhance awareness of cultural assets, develop initiatives that encourage growth of cultural tourism and creative industries, and coordinate with other established um, advisory boards. That was a list for the CACAB. Um, some of the I, um, roles identified for the Public Art Advisory Board, I'll list what those are, to establish and recommend a procurement of public art to the City Commission through the selection process based on criteria and qualifications of artists. We'll ensure that public art is placed in all sectors of the city. Keep up to date with developments and issues in the visual, visual and public arts. <laughs> Review and recommend approval or denial of applications from private developers submitted to meet city requirements for public art. Recommend approval of a, the public of the annual public art plan to the city commission. One member will chair artist selection panel meetings for each project and communicate panel recommendations to the full advisory board participate in community engagement activities for public art, and to attend the cultural arts, um, creative arts cultural advisory board meetings as needed. So it was, it was envisioned as having two sort of parallel um, art boards that do interact. That it was what was presented as part of the art plan. Right. Okay. So I think that that's a really good uh, clarification. And then, so just to make sure that I heard you and Eleanor okay correctly, um, it's sort of a little too premature for us to say how exact, how and if exactly um, the murals as it relates to the garage mural that got cut last year uh, would fit into um, the, the uh, public art plan. Is that correct? Yes, because the public art plan identifies um, creating a program and budget for the years to come, and that is approved by the committee commission in terms of the funding, and then that's kind of their plan for the following year. Okay, so that, that makes a lot Wait, of sense. Sorry. So the murals wouldn't be included in art in public places? It would be up to whatever public art yes, or to present it as part of the programming for that year. Okay. okay. I think number one, what we need to decide is um, how this board is going to function if we want to obviously release it to the entire city and then who would we want to have as a liaison for that board that's more appropriate that fits outside of the CRA? Um, which type of department? Does anyone have any thoughts on that? Uh, well, I definitely think it should be citywide. Um, what does everyone else think? Does, does anyone else have an issue with it being citywide? I, I have a couple of issues. I, I do think it should be citywide, but there's there's a lot of confusion. As, as a new commissioner, I'm just going to let you know, I was under the impression that this was strictly towards the CRA and we should be making CRA board decisions during, you know, the CRA time. Now it seems that we are, you know, making decisions about a citywide um, project during the CRA board and, 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 and there's some confusion there. Um, I did read the uh, part, public art plan thoroughly. And what it seems to me is that there's a lot of overlap where it comes to the murals, the decisions, making calls to artists. A lot of that is already in the 
public art plan. And then I don't know if Laura and Linda have had an opportunity to read through the master plan because it is very comprehensive and it, there is a lot of overlap with what's being suggested. I think the things that you've been successful at, the Dania After Dark, the art in the hall, you know, those things, you know, should maybe continue the way they have been. But when it comes to the art in public places, and I also looked at the uh, community centers that you wanted to make vibrant and beautiful, which I agree, but we also have the parks master plan and we're also doing um, CW Thomas Park and Frost Park, which are the same things that you, you know, suggested. So I don't want to, you know, say let's, let's beautify our community centers and we have a, a plan that's already in place to, to, to work with that. So I do think it's mature, it's premature to, to, to establish what we want to do. I think there needs to be a clear definition between the functions of the boards right now. I think you guys being able to review the public art plan and understanding what the city already has for a citywide art plan and seeing how you can contribute to it and have that synergistic energy as you were speaking about. I, I think there is a way to work together, but to try to create a budget, to try to make budgetary decisions when there's a lot of overlapping, um, I, I just think it's too mature to do right now. Thank you. Okay, I, I just wanted to add, um, although it, I know the whole thing about this is a CRA, we serve as the same board. We can't, and we can't make any decisions tonight, regardless of if it was a CRA workshop or if it was a commission workshop. We're just dialoguing and trying to see what action item we may be able to place somewhere else and how we, how we want to move forward. So I'm, I'm trying to kind of like not be, if, I'm trying to be as efficient as possible with what I'm hearing from you all. So is there, um, is there a want for us to assign someone from the city to be the liaison? If it's going to serve as a city board, we need someone from the city and not the CRA to be able to um, be there. I see um, board member Llewellyn and then vice chair. I'm, I'm concerned that that's a decision that we're making as a CRA board, as opposed to as a city commission. And regardless of the fact that we can't make, we can't vote on things, even making decisions, it's my understanding that if this is supposed to be under the city commission, then it needs to be reserved for a city workshop, not for a, a CRA workshop. If I'm wrong, then somebody can correct me, but that's my understanding. So even making a decision as to who that liaison should be, I don't think it's supposed to be done tonight. Okay, well, I'll ask Tom um, if there is an issue for us not pinpointing a person, but for us to understand and see the thoughts of each other in what direction we may want to go in, because if that's, it, it makes no sense and it wouldn't have been approved for us to even have any type of dialogue if we aren't going to. I just want to us to have a dialogue since we're already here to see what our thoughts are, not to specifically make a decision and say, this is what we're going to go with, but to have the dialogue and see what each other's thoughts were. Tom, is that? Yeah, is that the, 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 the dialogue is permissible, but of course we're not gonna make any decisions because we okay. can't. And secondly, I would avoid even doing a consensus because as Ms. Llewellyn points out, we're not here for a, not as the city board. So I, I would avoid right. consensus, but each one speaking your mind and what you prefer, uh, that's sort of an informal consensus, but at least people know what you're doing. It's okay to do that. So Correct. Not developing a formal consensus. Thank you. So um, but, um, our, I don't know if you were finished, board member Llewellyn. I, I'm finished, but I'm, I'm going to refrain from putting out any of my opinions at this point because I'm still not comfortable with it since I, I mean, I, I personally was one of the people who didn't think we should have this meeting that I put we found out the information that we found out. So I'm not really very comfortable with being here. So. Sure. Vice Chair. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Um, anyhow, I've been sitting here listening, I guess you know that, and um, I'm, I just want to make sure I understand everything. We have the CACAB, and then we have the Arts and Public Places. Is that correct? Those are the two boards we have? Yes. Okay. And the um, scene of the city is um, collecting funds through certain things through the city commission side of our, our, our business, the uh, Arts and Public Places. And we're going to have all this art going to go out that the city is paying for through this collection of monies. I agree that that's the way that, that this should go. And the money from that 
gardeners should go to that the art in public places. But on the other hand, you know, the CACAB has been around for a while and worked very hard at what they've been doing. And, and I cannot see spending taxpayers' money on two different things where we're, we've got money coming from another side. So what I'm just going to, as, as you said about the discussion, I'm going to end it. Maybe they, um, the city commission can allow to put money from that, that fund into the CACAB instead of putting it through the, um, through the um, taxpayers' dollars that are, that are there and use that funds and let them have their own board if, they, if that's what we choose to do, because I can't see us going with two boards unless and, and funding to uh, fund a second board when the money's already in the arts and public places. So if, if, if I had my, if it's legal and we come to a conclusion at a city commission workshop or city commission meeting, I would be willing to say, listen, if they're already working at it and give them money from that, if we can't give them front of that for money from there, then I think that the boards need to be either somebody needs to represent and go to where the money's coming from. I don't agree with taking, taking taxpayers' money and add it to that when we already have it coming from somewhere else. That's my opinion. You asked for a uh, discussion. That's all I have to say. Yes. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm okay with the um, the day after dark and everything, the art in the hall and the installations and things of that nature because we've done that before and that kind of seems separate as a separate task. Um, rather than the other projects that were previously kind of submitted and 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 kind of we were going to budget it and then we all know what happened. Um, but now since we have that board, I, I just honestly don't know um, if that is going to serve a purpose even from taking it from our in public places just to give it to y'all to facilitate it a different way when that's what that board was kind of created to do. So I, I'm still trying to understand and, and learn it. Um, but 40, you know, but I asked for um, $47,000 from an advisory board when we don't fund any of our boards. That's a hard ask from me coming, you know, to, to try and, you know, try to understand why would I give, you know, and out of that 47,000 to 6,000 is only for art in the hall um, for Daniel After Dark. So really $41,000 for projects. Um, that is one thing to earmark them maybe in our it's in pub, public places and say look these are things we want to earmark they're already been approved you've worked through um and, and that nature uh, that's one thing to kind of say that but to allow it to go to a board that doesn't have the same similar structure which honestly in this art and public places board it it gives more of an assurance of procurement and things of that nature because you have so many different moving pieces of different agencies that um, that actually is in charge of, of doing so. I just don't know how realistic or effective that is to kind of take from one pot that they're already gonna have to go through an approval process and then put it in another pot that I have to go through another process of, of doing so. So those are kind of my thoughts on that. I see Linda has her hand raised. Go ahead, Linda. I wanted to just go back to a uh, point that um, Commissioner Davis was making about understanding the Public Arts Committee and what it, what it entails. It is far more expanded than anything the CACAB can do. And we understand that. Okay? We in no way, shape, or form could take on those responsibilities. However, having read through that plan and having been there for the presentation and have talked with uh, Corinne and with uh, the uh, consultant about the Public Arts Committee, you are funding them. Yes, it's coming from developer money. You are not funding any of the other advisory boards except that before the, our advisory board was being funded through the budget for the CRA, which was brought to you as the city commission. Now, the one thing that is totally lacking in the Public Arts Committee, there is absolutely nothing in it for performing arts, zero. There is nothing to provide for a venue to present performing arts. There's nowhere to have plays, There's nowhere to have any of that that should be a primary consideration, in my opinion, for the Dania Beach. You're probably one of the only cities 
in, in the surrounding cities that does not have a performing arts center of any kind or a museum of any kind except W. Moda. The, the other item that the $47,000, which I think looking at it the way it's being presented, that rest of that budget, really we're talking about $16,000 for 22 in fiscal year, not 47. The 47 is involving the entire thing for multi-year budgeting. If we were going to do the bridges, if we were going to do other murals, if we were going to do those things, first of all, they couldn't possibly be accomplished in, in one fiscal year. We've been trying for over three years to get FDOT and South Florida Water Management to discuss the bridge paintings, which could be as simple as just using the three colors of the Dania Beach logo. You know, just something to lead into the city, to bring it in. It's very simple. It, it doesn't have to be a mural per se. It could be something as simple as bringing people in from the sign by the airport and bringing people in from the other end of town just to see. And one of the things Laura mentioned, and I know I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm talking too much, but you do have some of the water, the, the hydrant, hydrants painted in the Dania Beach color. You do have them already in parts of the city, and that's a good idea. So that same idea could be promoted to poles, you know, all that. That, I think, is easy for the CACAB to do, and we can do that. We can find funding for that from the city budget and also from us trying to get donors. Like, Sherwin Williams, I'm sure. We haven't talked to them, but in the past they've been very willing. Home Depot, providing us with paints and things. They are very willing to help us. But we're not talking about expenses for that other than labor. And artists, view, if we have to you know, do a call to artists, like for the City Hall wall. But the biggest lacking that, that public arts has absolutely no provision for any type of performing arts. None at all. It's mostly sculptures and, and kinetic arts or whatever. It absolutely provides zero for enhancement of performing arts in the city of Green Beach. Thank you. Um, board member Ottman. Okay, so I, I'm just, again, I'm trying to sort of keep us on the path. Um, so I, I think that a lot of what we're saying is that we for some of the projects um that were discussed we we would want to see how it's going to shake out with the public arts fund um money um and, and how it can work from that separately from this what I, I would say everyone think about uh is the value of the the art in the hall the two numbers put together the six thousand plus i think it was twenty three hundred um, I think it's very reasonable. And again, I think there's been proof of concept of it. Um, and I, I think that's a, a reasonable thing to fund for the year because those monies wouldn't be available to just uh, take out of the um, AIPP fund. So they would, you know, they would need that money to be able to do this, uh, to do the uh, art in the hall once it comes back online. So I would like to look tomorrow uh, to look at funding that. And then beyond that, uh, you know, I, I would like maybe there to be some sort of process, and this would happen amongst you board members. I would like to see two things. One, I would like you to come up with maybe a, um, uh, some qualification, maybe this already exists, qualifications for what you would like as for members. Um, I know several of us, we just get, um, interest forms and we put whoever on there and it, maybe it's someone who just has a vague interest in art but perhaps if you felt you the board felt it would be beneficial perhaps you would like more stringent qualifications to have to be met to be on the board uh either some profession in arts or uh i don't know something involved in arts and arts and cultural um things in in broward or dania beach and two uh, I'd like to see something for how how the the board could perhaps 
present their, their and, and we've talked about this before several years ago, um, about presenting projects as they come up that you would like to do, and then uh, sort of how you had today, although I'd like it to be more comprehensive, uh, a budget request with line items for how you would be spending the money. And, you know, it, that is something that could then, it, it could go through art and public places um, to perhaps allocate the money from there. So uh, in, the, in, in short, in the immediate, I, I think what we need to look at now that we've sort of said uh, we're going to decide upon the direction as being citywide, um, that we, we look at, at funding that aspect of it as I feel that's the most immediate need. And I felt that the number you presented, I, I really feel those two numbers should be together. Um, and that perhaps a breakdown would be nice, but I feel that those were reasonable numbers that you presented. The 16,000? Um, no, the, the 6,000 plus, I think it was 2,300, you know, for like the artist reception or something. So I, I just scribbled down 8,500. I think $8,500 for a year for the amount of enjoyment that the, the community has, you know, received uh, from that, that event is, is very reasonable. I, I generally don't like the idea of, you know, begging artists to work for free, uh, asking buddies to sing for free. I, I just, I don't think that's appropriate. I think, you know, even if it's, um, just paying for, for one or two hours of time, which if I remember, they, they would perform either for a short period of time or maybe two or three segments of a short period of time. I see Laura nodding yes, so I must be somewhat correct. Um, I, I think- Yeah, that, I know they got paid. Right, 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 but I'm saying they're not performing like um, how we have out, out there um, on the stage, how we have them performing for a right. two hour stretch. So these are shorter stretches. Um, so I think a smaller amount is appropriate, but. I, you know, we want to follow um, good standards of practice, and we want to be good stewards of of the of the uh, the artists in the area. So we, we want to pay them uh, and treat them right. Vice Chair, and then uh, Mr. Chen. Uh, thank you, Chair. I think um, we should end all this conversation because we're repeating ourselves and uh, discuss a lot of this after we do the budget because right now uh, we're in a situation where we're talking about funding this and funding that. We haven't even done our budget, which is tomorrow night. I think when we have this budget discussion tomorrow night, when it comes up, it'd be a good item to discuss at that time, how much and where the money should go to. Uh, right now we're, we're bouncing between CRA and, and city and uh, we're not gonna get anywhere more than we've heard uh, presentations and we've heard um, you know, what we what she'd like, what we somebody'd like to see and stuff like that. but. I think we get a little off track here. So this is my recommendation. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I think you're right. I think though it's important for us to hear where everyone's coming from and then maybe that will shorten the time that we have to spend on this discussion tomorrow because we, we are giving them the opportunity now and in in all honesty it was on the agenda and then we kinda got cut short with that. So um, we, we have heard everything and we've have we've heard different numbers and different takes. And so it's a lot for us to digest or maybe it's not and come, you know, come time tomorrow, we can make a decision without having to go back through the nuances and the small little details of every part of this budget because it was all presented to us today. Mr. Chen. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, there, there's two subjects that uh, I would like you to think about including in your discussion. One is kind of a continuation on board member Odman's comment. Um, within the creation resolution, there are some small, uh, I guess, there's some definition of standards as to board members for the CAC. Um, and uh, the idea of perhaps the, the board creating something that's more uh, stringent or perhaps more definitive of the type of board members that they would like to see on there is a, a very good discussion. Um, but I'd like to point out that um, just last week, I received a bio of a prospective member for appointment, uh, an ad hoc member. That's why it came to me. Um, and it was a half page bio. There was nothing 
on the paper that indicated they met the minimum standards that exist within the resolution. So I think it would be good for the board to actually create an application process for its memberships so that it could go to all of us, including you, who are responsible for making appointments to the board so that you can make sure that the, whoever's applying can actually meet the minimum standards that's in the resolution. And the second piece is, um, there are some limitations that's created when something is identified as an advisory board. An advisory board is an extension of the CRA board, or in this case, the city commission. As such, all of their meetings has to be sunshine meetings and there has to be minutes and so forth taken. Uh, I've had conversations with Keisha, who has been serving as the liaison to this board. And I understand she's been very careful to make sure that the public notices have gone out on time and on this type of stuff. But I'd also like to point out, that means that when they're doing events, such as Dania at the Dark, and they're doing the arts in the hall piece of it, if there are more than two of them in the room that's conducting board business, that not only has to be, it's not just an event, it is actually a public meeting. It's got a formality to it. And it also requires recorded uh, minutes. So there needs to be some thought as to how you design and work with how we all work with this board for the activities that's being discussed to make sure they're kept within the compliance of the Sunshine Laws. Thank you. Um, all right, I'll go to the last two, Laura, then Linda, and then we'll close out this meeting. My request is that I am able to complete my presentation because I think um, I was just getting to the part that offers some budget friendly alternatives as well as you know what's possible in the future. And I think uh, that would be a good note to end this meeting on. If, if Linda would like to speak before that, that would be fine. How much longer do you have of the presentation? Because I'm just saying, honestly, we. I know I know what the, the goals are for the CAC and what it encompasses, and I know what you all have been doing. The purpose of this meeting was for us to try and see like how we wanted the, the board to be able to interact with the art and public places and the future of it. We know that we want to have a Creative Arts Council board. Um, we know what your, you know, the goals and the mission is of, of the CAC, and, and the other part of it was to talk about the funding. So I'm not, I'm not I, have, I have six slides left and most of them include videos. I can abridge it and just show videos that are about 10 seconds in length. So another two minutes would be all I would need. Okay, go ahead. Okay, let me see screen share back on. Share. Alrighty, so let's see. I'm gonna is everybody able to see this? Yes. Okay, wonderful. So we are a small city with big possibilities. Moving forward, um, art in the community is necessary for the enhancement for Dania Beach to maintain investment interest, promote tourism activities and encourage Dania as a destination of, with and provide cultural outlets for the community, including part-time visitors and residents. Um, most importantly, we would love to see a live music venue or performing arts venue, maybe in place of this guy, and have it look a little bit more like this, which was a concert I attended over the weekend of Julian Marley, which I would guess would had about over a thousand per, um, spectators. And it was wonderful. It was one love. <laughs> And uh, a few other installations I've discussed in past meetings that I think go very well with our city branding is this idea of this kinetic wave structure, which I'll just play a quick little clip so you guys can get an idea of that. I think with our logo, um, a, a giant wave or something of the sort is something really distinctive that Dania Beach should definitely consider. They come in all colors, shapes, and sizes, and can be lifted and taken down in case a hurricane comes as well. 
kind of see it, it resembles kind of like a school of fish and just dances in the wind. Here is an example of what I believe it to be the future of art installations. Uh, this was a Van Gogh, well, uh, this was actually an impressionist um, presentation done in 3D. And so this really just takes a room and a screen to put on. And I had what I would consider as well as everyone with me, a spiritual experience because when you go to Europe and you go to these museums where these artworks are, first of all, you can't get that close to them to appreciate the intricacies of it all, but then they're digitally mapped and brought to life in these 3D formats, which I think appeals to all ages. And then the next thing I think is really fantastic is these are called projection mapping. This is the Flagler building down in Miami. And so you're able to create these really, really neat installations on surfaces. They, they are created within hours and the projectors are very inexpensive. This guy can go a little bit more. I'm gonna let him play for just about a minute and then I'll be complete. new media artist and I'm here to talk to you about empty spaces. Blank empty surfaces that surround us, they permeate our lives. Where we live, where we work, in our homes, in the buildings, in the cities that surround us, blank walls. Even the schools where we go to school and we learn, our classrooms where we educate ourselves, filled with static blank empty surfaces. Now this is what I want to talk to you about. I want to talk to you about how we transform these static empty spaces into multimedia environments permanently. My work has involved a variety of different things, from lights to sculptures to 3D printing to projection mapping. And projection mapping is the thing I want to talk to you about specifically. It's the perfect way to transform these multimedia environments. For example, the thing we did at the Sydney Opera House, we converted the organ into an organ of light and connected it into the keyboarder's key. So when he played on the stage, he played the organs, but using light. Now, I haven't always been a new media artist. In fact, my background's a little bit strange. I grew up in Wales. Okay. That's pretty much all I wanted to show on his. And, and this, this concept is the cutting edge and also very economical for us to consider when considering budgets as well. And Thank you. I have one brief video from Singapore. Oh, oh they took it away from me. Okay, I'm complete. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. Oh, did you speak up, Linda, or no? Oh, I, I haven't, I cannot mute myself. Okay, you're muted. Okay. Uh, as it relates to what, what Laura was presenting, and I know you still, for citywide, I had a conversation and, uh, with Eric Brown, and he and I, we, as far as in, in conjunction with the CACAB, the Friends of the Library, and the Parks and Recreation, that we can collaborate on some of these things, like for performing arts the existing community centers before they're knocked down or whatever. And he's in agreement that this is all possible. So as it relates to the money that we put in there, that, that $10,000 for four or five uh, readings, plays, dance, recitals, that kind of stuff, that we could we can share that responsibility for putting on these things and still provide a venue within the city in different areas for performing arts so that it's not just limited to city hall you know like the art and hall thing what my idea and talking to eric is to bring this out into the community into each of these communities so that they get a chance to see it it's free but we would have to pay we would have to pay for those troops to come and put it on like I mentioned Tony Walsh, he's going to come and do a reading. And Eric said he would provide the space. He's going to do either the Telltale Heart or the Raven. And so that's a free thing. And if we, we go to C.W. Thomas and, and use that space and have this and, and publicize it in advance, we would get 
a good element of the community to come here. We could do another one at I.T. Parker. Not I.T. Parker because the parking there is horrendous. Or Cross Park. And, and then later on, expand it. So I, I would like for you to see the value in what we put in there and why. And again, this is all in collaboration with the city and friends of the library and the CACAD. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Linda, I think that you can accomplish a lot of those things just by working hand in hand with Parks and Recreation and they could put things in their budget and you all can help to facilitate that. I think that would be most appropriate to, to, to maybe do so if he has ideas that he wants to bring certain elements of programming to the parks that that is usually a typically addressed within his budget. And if he wanted you all to be the liaison to help him with that, I don't, I don't see why that would be an issue. Okay, well, that's, that's definitely where we were going. And he said it has to go through the parks and recreation as, a, as an event for them, as a class or whatever. And I understand that, but it's still gonna involve monies like this. And if it doesn't come out of the city budget, it'll have to go through him. But, you know, we're willing to collaborate on whatever is necessary to bring performing arts to all parts of the city. Okay, thank you. Um, Natalie, and then we are leaving. Go ahead, Natalie. I don't think you can. Oh, hello. Hi, uh, my name's Natalie Taveras. I, I have just been appointed very recently to the uh, CAC board, and I, I'm happy to be here. Uh, I, my background is in theater, and uh, particularly technical, technical theater. I'm a professor at Broward College. Um, and I really wanted to join this board because I saw a lack of performing arts in Dania Beach. And as you guys are thinking about this, I really just wanted to jump in here and echo what Linda is saying. Um, uh, public art, I saw their presentation. It is really focused on sculpture and these really big iconic pieces, which is great for our city. But what really is gonna bring a community together is going to be events like live music, theater, dance, uh, fine arts, photography, painting, sculpture, spoken words. And um, as you guys are, are thinking about this future and the funding for here, just keep, keep in mind that so much of art is that performance element. And uh, from what I saw, uh, Art in Public Places was really focused around mostly iconic sculptures. So uh, just really think about how uh, these type of events that are live and that we're making real in-person connections will make a positive impact in our community. So um, I just wanted to jump in and really second um, the sentiments that Linda had just spoken about earlier. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all. If no other board members have any comments, um, we will adjourn the meeting. All right, I'll see you all tomorrow. Meeting adjourned.